Welcome and thank you for dropping by. Please remember to click the like and subscribe buttons should this kind of video strike your fancy. We'll also do some other things too. I've got a story about physics in World War II you may not have heard, and long ago I heard a first-hand account from a perspective not often reported. But first we have matters of math in the material world, and of a certain flat earther who finds it unfair science doesn't support any of his flat earth concepts. Darn that science, it clings to reality. And now, our feature presentation, a glimpse through parted fog banks into a world of incomprehensible physics. Submitted for your approval, a pilgrim wreathed in confusion, a mariner adrift in a sea not of make-believe pirates and happily ever after stories, but a sea of equality and exponentiation, of quadratics and quarks, of insight for free, save for the bargain of critical thinking, a place we call the mathematics zone. We don't need to prove anything. We don't need to make a model. We don't need to make any assertions that you'll then trap us on because you know that we can't prove anything because we've got a P900 and a compass. It's just disproportionately unrealistic to argue that we should have a model. How should we have a model? There's no science for a flat earth. All of the science is all based around this non bullshit nonsense of heliocentrism. How can you expect us to have a model? I can answer that. We humans are abstract thinkers. We're trapped in our skulls, yet we leap across the void with our telescopes and instrumentation. If you say the world is flat, you have already modeled it. The abstraction of a flat world into the words, the world is flat, is a model crafted in a sentence. I reject the abstraction and the suggested reality behind it because it can't be used in any productive way. Besides, don't whine about having a P900 and a compass. Those are excellent tools. What do you think Eratosthenes would have given for a P900 and a good compass? By cracky, when I was a kid, we were real photographers, my dad and I. Many a time I stayed up late on moonless nights, out there in the garden, harvesting dark by the bushel and the peck so we could have a well-stocked dark room. You don't know how lucky you've got it with your digital P900. Seriously, the questions you ask and so often incorrectly answer do not require the budget of a national space agency. This is for those that th think that for some reason maths is good enough. Let's see what this says. This is in response to uh, this guy, Johnny Ragadoo. Yesterday I calculated the mass of air in our local Walmart. It was about 70,000 kilograms. And this guy reads, oh, well, I never mind that. Now I have a reason to escape jail. So I'll calculate the, what was it? The mass of the air in our local Walmart. It was about 70,000 kilograms. That's the scientific formula opening a path through the fourth dimension, in this case, proving that the weight of air in the local Walmart was 70,000 kilograms. Now I can just walk through walls because I've got a little bit of maths. Uh, no, Johnny. If you're going to weigh the air, you need to weigh the air, and you can't. You can only calculate it using principles, concepts, theories. That What you need to do, mate, is you need to condense all the air into a nice little cube and weigh that. And create some intermolecular, um, intermolecular bonds to make it into a solid. That's how you do it. You can't do it otherwise. Hang on. Intermolecular bonds? Compress air into a solid? Why would I need to do that to weigh air? It seems like a straightforward request. What's with the intermolecular stuff? What you ask is hardly a challenge. But there isn't weight, because the only weight is to do with each particle. There are no intermolecular bonds. That's why they're not solids. If it was solid like liquid, then you would have weight. I'm assuming you mean if gas were either solid or liquid, not solid like liquid, it would have weight. I see something to test. First, we'll need a gas state molecular mass entrapment device. Impounding gas state molecular mass requires highly specialized apparatus. You can't just grab a spatula or a turkey baster and expect much. This is a job for technologically sophisticated equipment. Mine cost about 80 bucks at Sears. Not exactly a NASA level budget. It has a tank capacity of three gallons. We can use this to weigh the air in Walmart. First, a little trick borrowed from the Mathematics Zone. If I know a six-pack contains six beers, and if I know each beer is 12 ounces, 
I don't have to challenge my weak tolerance for alcohol to know there are 72 ounces in a six pack. It's just multiplication and it works. Pretty good trick, wouldn't you say? If I can weigh the air in this tank, then I can use similar techniques to learn the mass of the air in our local Walmart. If there's any doubt, pop another cool one and think it through. Let's give it a try. We need to settle on what units to use. Let's be pure. Kilopascals make sense for air pressure. Here's the conversion from the PSI the gauge on the compressor reads to the kilopascals we want. There are 6.89476 kilopascals in a pound per square inch. A, a kilopascal is one newton per square meter and it is a standard unit of pressure. I have an idea that air mass is 1.3 kilograms per cubic meter at standard temperature and pressure. Let's convert the three gallon tank capacity to cubic meters. Gallons divided by 264.172 equals cubic meters. It's not complicated. That's just like saying beers divided by six equals six packs. Boyle's law tells us a relationship between pressure and volume at a constant temperature. As volume goes up, pressure goes down. The relationship is a nice consistent ratio, so multiplication expresses it precisely. Pressure times volume at a constant temperature and without adding or removing any gas equals a constant value. My air compressor will weigh two tenths of a pound more when filled than when empty. That's good to know because it sure saves us the trouble of having to weigh it. From information extracted from the mathematics zone, we already know. But you still want to see. Well, I guess I could have been wrong about the density of air. First, we'll need an NRDMQ, otherwise known as a non-relevant density mass quantifier. My nerd MQ is a Walmart bathroom scale. The two metal things are chunks of E-Track tie-down rails which serve as a platform to support the air compressor on the scales. Note that the scale correctly tears to zero. The compressor got in the way of the display. I could see it, but when the compressor was sitting on the scales, I couldn't get enough light on the display to read it in a photo. From every angle I tried, I got glare. Fortunately, the scale holds its reading, so I got pictures of the indicated weight. Here's the weight of the scale with the tank equalized to ambient pressure. Empty in colloquial terms. Any guesses what weight I got with it charged to 100 PSI? Any? How about that? An extra two tenths of a pound, just as predicted. Wouldn't you just know? Now that we've confirmed air is 1.3 kilograms per cubic meter, let's look at the local Walmart. I didn't screenshot my first look at the structure, so I went back to Google Earth. This time I measured a little closer to the periphery of the building, leaving out odd irregularities like lawn and garden and the automotive departments. The dim yellow line is the polygon I measured with Google Earth. This time I got 11,669.02 square meters. The ceiling is probably 20 feet high in the building, but I used 5 meters to make sure I was being realistic and on the low side. That came to 58,345.1 cubic meters. Multiply that by our confirmed 1.3 kilograms per cubic meter density, and we got 75,848.63 kilograms. Did you know air was that heavy? There are several reasons I went to all this trouble for Sleeping Warrior, who I believe is capable of understanding the real world if he chooses to. I wanted to show there are things flat earthers think are impossible that are easily seen in everyday settings if you know how to look. Things like measuring the weight of air in a Walmart, the curve of the earth, and even water flowing uphill. Johnny Raggedoo, do you understand that it's easy to see what you say is impossible? No, it isn't easy to see what I say is impossible. You can't argue for gravity being a force. There is no force. It's not me that's arguing an impossible state. I can demonstrate gas pressure in a vacuum and it fills the available space. You cannot demonstrate gas pressure without a container. Claiming that the Earth is a good example of gas pressure without a container is, is fundamentally wrong 
because you can't demonstrate that it's an open system. It's just what you tell us it is. Well, it isn't an open system because you can't have gas pressure in an open system, is it? Like water flowing uphill. Like water flowing uphill. Just stand on a beach during the flood tide and watch the water slide up the slope. I also wanted to show that a flat earther with a P900 and a compass shouldn't complain. Those are great tools. Heck, I just measured the mass of the air in a Walmart with Boyle's Law and inexpensive air compressor and cheap bathroom scales. Most importantly, I wanted to show that flat earthers who treat good-hearted people badly need a lesson in manners. It's particularly exasperating when fellow humans parade embarrassingly bad behavior, shouting to the world their crushing ignorance, maligning good, decent people. Sleeping warrior, it is impossible to lie to you when stating the world is spherical and there is no dome. Because the world is spherical and there is no dome. I will also proudly admit rural heritage. I'm a scruffy guy from the sticks. I married a mountain gal. And from Sleeping Warrior's use of the term hillbilly, I don't think he knows what he's talking about. I resemble that remark. My wife resembles that remark. And that makes me one of the happiest guys on this lovely, curvaceous, spinning earth. Actually, there was one other reason I wanted to do this. I like Rod Serling. <laughs>